It's Wednesday, November 2nd. This is Geek Nights with Rim and Scott. Mostly Scott. Let's do this. Let's do this. All right. Yeah. So, I got to the train station this morning and yeah. looked at my cell phone and it said one voicemail. My cell phone really sucks at telling me when there's voicemail. It doesn't make noise or anything. Ah, I've told my phone to make a noise and it makes a noise. I tried. Then I immediately looked to see how I could tell my phone to make a noise. Uh-huh. I couldn't find how to tell it to make a noise in a voicemail. I don't think it can. So the voicemail's my dad. So I check it and he says, call me. Which is real informative. Yeah, I hate it when people do that, because that always means either something bad happened and they didn't want to tell you in voicemail, or they're just stupid and they're not informative enough in their voicemails. It's the second one. Anyway, so I go and I try to call him, and he I, he doesn't turn his cell phone on or keep it on his person. Great. So I got immediately dumped to his voicemail. <laughs> Did you leave a call me message? No. You should have. No. So... Eventually, later in the day, he picked up the phone, right? And uh-huh. he's like, oh, you call me now. <laughs> and I'm like, well, I'm going, I was supposed to know that it was a timely call. What, what, you know, what the hell? He's like, apparently, he got locked out of the house. <laughs> and I have a key to his house, and he would have wanted me to come open it. <laughs> now, just the other day. Yeah, I do distinctly recall. Now, I, it made me realize that. I would have had to go and uh, open the house because I expect them to come open this house if by some terrible accident we lock ourselves out. Because I did notice that the other day we were talking about just this. Yeah. And I said, what would you do if you locked yourself out? And you said, I'd just call my daddy and he'd come and open the door. Yep. But now I guess I, I have to do the same thing the other way. Yeah. Uh, it's great that I don't have to deal with I should have said I didn't have a key to his house. But do no, you? I do. Yeah, I do. But he probably knows you have it. Well, he wasn't 100% sure. He, that's why he asked me if I had one. But I wasn't going to lie. I don't lie. Yeah? So if you had accidentally answered your phone, you would have been stuck driving to Connecticut instead of going to work. No, it would have been last night. The oh. voicemail was last night. Ah. Uh, I just didn't see it till this morning because the phone sucks. How do you lock himself out? What was your mom or your sister? My or? mom is in the stupid basket tour thing. Or maybe, ah. she, got, maybe she got back already. I don't know. I don't know the story with that. Your mom and those baskets. But her birthday's next week, so I have to, like, go there. I'll just <laughs> take the train there after work. And All right. Whatever. Yeah, nothing interesting happened to me today. Awesome. Yeah, I sat at work. I uh, didn't do a lot of work, and then I came home. Awesome. Yeah. I did work. I did work, but it was a lot of, like, install a thing on a server. So I'd st- do the install, do all the configs, and then i wait for, like, 20 minutes while it does what it's got to do. Firefox crashed. So, uh, anyway, there's actually a lot of fairly interesting big news today. Oh, really? Ah, yes, really. Really? Oh, really? Oh, really. Yeah, really. So, uh, apparently the CIA is running gulags in uh, Eastern Europe. We knew that. Yeah, but now uh, the government knows that. Or at least I'm now sure the Amnesty International knows it. Now the government admits that it knows it. Well, if you admit you're doing bad, doesn't that also kind of also mean we're going to stop doing it? I don't think so. That's not what I was led to believe by these uh, articles about you it. You can't say you're doing something you know is bad. Not only do they know they're bad. And not stop doing it. They refer to them as, quote, black sites. Because that's not an evil name at all. They don't call them anything like the puppy factory. Or... What, if, what if I'm a company and, and all of a sudden I come out and I say, yeah, we've got these uh, death camps. <laughs> and then they say, oh... I guess you, you've come out and you're going to stop death camping. No, actually, we're going to keep them going. Oh, you even can't better. Do that. It even just... better. The Washington Post knows where all these camps are located. They have chosen not to reveal this information to the public at the request of a senior U.S. official mm-hmm. because the disclosure might, quote, disrupt counterterrorism efforts in those countries and elsewhere. Well, we just know now not to read the Washington Post because they're a bunch of pussies. Yeah, yeah. Though, uh, from all the rumor mongering, it seems like uh, most of them are in former Soviet territories, and they're actually former gulags. Like, really? Old abandoned prisons and stuff. How can you do something bad? Usually you admit it, and then you stop. Keep doing it! 
Because they didn't really admit it. It's other people found out, and they don't know what to do about that. You close them, and you at the nah, minimum... Nah, you can't close them, because... Uh, at the can't... minimum, you say you closed them, and you keep them open. Come on, you gotta <laughs> at least look nah, like nah. you're trying. Because if they say they closed them, that's admitting that they had them. They already admitted they had them. We're beyond that. Not really. They just said, don't talk about it, and they're... Fine, then you know what you do? You say they don't exist, and you move them. Yeah, see, the thing is, the CIA will not acknowledge the details of its system. and But they acknowledge the existence of the system. It's not really. It's complicated, and no one's really... Everyone's kind of just going... Doo-doo. But if they didn't acknowledge the existence of the system, how do we know it's not just some bullshit made up by the newspaper? I don't know. Oh, that's great. Uh, apparently, they were... Well, we, this, they must have admitted it, because apparently they were conceived in the couple months after September 11th. Well, fine. If they admitted it, then everything I said before. Yeah, but they're... Oh, oh, they're claiming that they aren't illegal and that they're part of the war on terror and that they need him. I'm killing this guy. It's it's all right. It's part of the war on terror. I thought he was a terrorist. Uh, Britain got away with that. Dude, the police will come here one morning and be like, you, you killed your roommate. I'll be like, he was a terrorist. <laughs> that might work. It's kind of scary, yeah. Yeah. The fact that I'm more afraid of being shot or harassed by my own police department or my own government that I am of actual terrorists with And bombs. it's not even that I'm afraid that they'll get me because I do something terrorist-like. No, it's just, I'm afraid they'll just get me. I'll be walking I'm down the street. I'm afraid that they'll just, you know, think I'm a terrorist randomly, just by accident or whatever. Yeah. <laughs> I know I'm not doing anything terrorist, for real. Yeah. Though not everything bad is happening in the U.S. this time. There's riots in multiple countries that most people don't know about. I can't believe I didn't know that there were riots in Paris. For like a week. For like a week. And no Hundreds one, no one told me. Burned. I read uh, Google News. Yeah, Google News had a blurb at the bottom. Only I, didn't, I, I didn't even see it. Because I have a like European Union Google News section, and this came uh, up at like the EU bottom. Section. And menacing youths have been rioting in the poor areas of Paris. See, I wonder how big this riot is if it didn't get to the top of news. Uh, in one night, over 180 vehicles were torched. A uh, bunch of arrests, riot police... Uh, the city the city is generally in a state of panic, at least the outer, like, poor boroughs of the city. Wow. Oh, it's the Rodney King Ferris. Yeah. I mean, there have been a, couple, a bunch of deaths, but nothing, like, no huge massacre or anything yet. Yet? <laughs> well, it's still going on, and no one knows how to deal with it. Some of the right-wingers in the government are calling for uh, various military groups to just kind of storm through the suburbs and subdue anyone on the street. This is what you get for being a racist. Yeah. And uh, what's the other word? Xenophobia? Xenophobia? Yeah. Something like that, a little xenophobia? Ha ha ha, we are the xenophobe. I mean, France has the largest Muslim population of any Western nation, yet they seem to be the, one of the most racist about Muslims. Well, you know, Germany, they had a ton of Jews there. <laughs> and, and they didn't like them because the Jews are doing good. Bam, good win. Okay. All right. <laughs> so where else was the rioting? Ethiopia. Ah, Ethiopia, that wonderful paragon of civilization. Ethiopia is pretty good compared to some other African countries, like uh, yeah. Rwanda. Ethiopia was very nice until yeah. various things screwed it up. In uh, it's, still, it's still okay. It's yeah. okay. But what happened was they had an election, and uh, this guy won. The guy who was favored by Bush and such, uh. and uh, favored by Blair. And so all the people were like, it was rigged. It was rigged. Right? Was it rigged? We don't know. Probably. Oh, great. Uh, but anyway, what did the people do? Unlike fat-ass Americans who sit around when it's obviously rigged and do nothing, they rioted. Uh. And they're still rioting. And I think whether it was rigged or not, the guy who's in charge, who won the election, he put the opposition party in jail. Oh, <laughs> uh, see, up until you said that, I was thinking, all right, so the people are rioting, but it might not be rigged. They might just not just be overreacting. But damn. Yeah. Imagine if after the 2004 election, Bush had just been like, all right, Kerry Dean, uh, jail. Yeah. Way to kill the momentum by getting a call on your cell phone and making me pause it. Yeah. You know, you could have just ignored the cell phone. I don't want to. But, uh, why? We were doing something. The cell phone's more important than doing something. Because well, uh, uh, how do you, you didn't know who was calling. Yeah, I did. 
How could you have known? Because my mom just called and then she called again. How about when your mom called and you cut off the podcast? They don't need to know that there were two phone calls in the interim. Well, now they do. So uh, now there won't be any deception by you. Uh huh. As to the number of phone calls there were. Because I could really benefit from uh, falsifying such uh, wonderful and useful information. You do all the time. Yeah. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, Ethiopia. Oh, <laughs> wonderful. Though there was some cool news. Apparently Denver, Colorado legalized marijuana. Did they actually pass a law that says yes. so? Uh, passed a measure that makes it legal for residents over the age of 21 to possess up to an ounce of, mar- ounce of marijuana. To possess? Yeah. What about to sell? Uh, they can sell less than an ounce. So they can still get dealers, but they can't get people who just have some marijuana. Hmm. And the um, state of Oregon... Isn't not the if they Oregon. doesn't someone just have to say hey your town law can't conflict with state law? No, because it can conflict. All this means is that now it's only a violation of state and federal law. So Denver told the state police that yeah, if the state police of Colorado want to enforce their stupid drug laws, they're gonna have to send state troopers down here and do it themselves. Huh? Because our cops aren't gonna. But isn't it also? But I mean, if you're gonna do it that way, right? If you look at like uh look at a state like Connecticut, right? Yeah. The town of Trumbull that I lived in doesn't have a law that says murder is is illegal. Mm. The state has a law that says murder is illegal. all the murder crap, right? Yeah. So if you murder someone in Connecticut, it's a violation of state law. It is indeed a violation of state law and state now, law only. But the town cops arrest you because yes. you broke a state law. They don't have to send state troopers to get you. The town cops don't have to though and they won't now. Oh, they don't have to? And they won't. No, they don't. Oh, really? No. Oh, really? Yeah, really. Ah. I did not know this. I thought that pretty much, you know, it's like federalism. Federal law, state law, town law. All yeah. above laws apply below. Yeah, but apparently the town is going to say, screw you. We did something but that I mean, is right. But I mean, the town of Beacon doesn't have a no marijuana law. Yeah, what if it did? Well, if it did, you'd go to jail for breaking town law and breaking state law and then whatever. But Yeah, no, they passed a law of saying specifically it is not illegal. And specifically, oh, the police but, will but not then, go after it. But then doesn't that conflict with the state law? Yes. And this isn't the law illegal? No. It's stupid. Basically, it's If your poli- law in a town conflicts with the state the law... The point is, it's a political move. Because they believe that marijuana shouldn't be illegal. Oh, and that's a political move. It's fine, but the and law is going to be thrown out real soon. Maybe, maybe not. What do you mean, maybe not? If a state makes a law that directly conflicts with the federal law, yeah. it just goes away. Uh, not always. It has to get to a federal court first. Oh, yeah. But, I mean, this will go to a state court. Who do you think's going to win in the state court for the, when the state involved, it's their court? Well, the state hasn't said they're going to do anything at all. Well, if the state lets it fly, then that basically invalidates the state law. I mean, the most because it's state not can, the state law the is not enforced. The state can do because you can't. It's not against the law to not enforce the law. No, that's correct. So the only thing the state can do is send state troopers in to go after people with an ounce of marijuana and get them, and that's fine. But the local cops in Denver don't have to do jack anymore, and they won't. That's fine. Yeah. So it's never going to hit the courts because there's no chance for it to hit the courts. It's not illegal for the local cops to not enforce a law that isn't on their books. But yeah, but some guy can just go f- make file some papers in court, and then there'll be a, a thing about it. Uh, you can't file in court unless there has been a damage to you. Well, you can you can file suit against the uh, the state can try to sue the town for what? There has to be a damage, and they have to prove for it. damaging the state's laws. That's tricky. You have to prove tort, and it's not that easy to do. People Most do this likely, kind of crap all the time. Yeah, and they usually get thrown out immediately. If you don't have tort, you can't even sue. They just throw yeah, it out. Yeah, but you know what? There are lawyers who know what they're talking about who are smarter than us that are working on it right now. Yeah, and you know what? The town's probably going to win because no one cares. Yeah, but I mean, if the state doesn't enforce it, you can then you can argue in court. They didn't enforce the law. It might as well not exist. Yeah, that might be their goal. We don't know. I like that kind of thing, but... I really don't think we should start a trend of town laws overriding state laws because, you know, next we'll have Nazi town. Uh, you know what? That's fine because I'll just move out of Nazi town and the Nazi people can live in their crappy little Nazi town. Yeah. Federalism. Godwin, too. <laughs> We're on a roll. I'm going for Godwin, like, five today. All right, all right. Godwin, this one. So uh, the Microsoft Live debut. Uh, 
Windows wouldn't exist if IBM didn't make computers and sell them to Nazis. Um, IBM didn't make computers to sell to Nazis. They there, did way back in the day. There weren't computers. Yeah, there were. There were like Enigma and the there were machines of of international business. <laughs> <laughs> they were computers. Yeah, they were just really crappy and they were really big. But anyway, so this is real reminiscent of the other famous Microsoft demo that failed in front of millions of people. Yeah, but see, the thing is, this one actually, while it's hilarious that it failed, and Microsoft was very crappo in yep. its failing, it failed because the internet connection they were using died, and also everyone who was there watching, their wireless died, so it obviously yeah. wasn't... Though, two of the reporters who were there say that they think the demo died, and then Microsoft made the wireless die so they couldn't blog about it right away. The only two things that could be true that I could think of are, number one, Microsoft actually just lost the connection, and those reporters are all Linuxy and awesome. Maybe. Or they're right, which means, ha-ha, Linuxy and awesome. Either way, <laughs> no one's going to remember why it failed. They're just going to remember that it failed. Yeah, they're also going to remember, I read one guy who actually used, I think that's the article, the one you're looking at, one of those guys was talking about actual Microsoft Live and not about the fact that it went down. And he's like, yeah, it's cool after you customize it a whole bunch. It's not immediately useful. Ah. And it basically, compared to Google's stuffs that is equivalent, it, it's poop. Aha. Uh -huh. So, yeah. They yeah. finally come through on the, oh, we're going to make it a web service instead of an application. And it sucks. All right, Nostradamus. I, I thought it was going to be good if they actually did it. No, nah, I pretty much assumed it wouldn't be. Because uh, I thought it would be just like an application only on the web, but no. People have been trying to do that forever. And they've done it successfully. Not for office suites that are There's a word processor, and there's a spreadsheet, and they're both really good. Yeah, they're not as good from a business perspective. And by business, I mean what people in businesses use word processors and spreadsheets for. If you slightly modified these things, they would be. You just had to make it so it, uh, you just have to, you know, customize a little bit for your business. Yeah, but keep in mind, a lot of businesses use office suites in stupid ways. Oh, we're going to use a spreadsheet to do something we should use Microsoft Access for, but Microsoft Access sucks. You should never use it. They're, using, yeah. they're basically using Excel for something they're supposed to be using MySQL for. Yeah, yeah, something like that. Yeah, yeah. Oh, oh, I need to make a, a, a poster. I'm going to use Microsoft Word instead of, uh, I guess, the modern equivalent of Publisher. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> So, uh, my thing of the day isn't so much. It's really just a Wikipedia article, but I thought it was cool, and it amused me greatly at work. Ah, uh, Wikipedia. It is a list of unusual deaths, and it is just people who have died in unusual, funny, or interesting ways throughout history. How unusual could it be? I can't imagine a death that's so strange. All right, this one may not be true, but according to... May not be true? Then what's the point? Because accordingly, in 207 B.C., uh, How do we even... It's 207 B.C., what the hell? Chrysippus, some Greek philosopher, died of laughter after seeing a donkey eating figs. That's, that's just right, here, not... I'll move to ones that are definitely verified. Uh, King Bela I of Hungary died when his tall wooden throne collapsed because it was sabotaged by an assassin. <laughs> he was in a high chair. <laughs> and a guy yeah. cut the legs out. <laughs> yeah. Oh, another one with figs. Matthew Corvinus, a king of Hungary, died after eating a poisoned fig. I think someone sabotaged this thread, this page, with fig stories. Uh, I have uh. a theory. I have a theory. Hypothesis, if you will. <laughs> it's a hypothesis. Hypothesis. Uh, ooh, here's a good one. Uh, this conquistador was killed by uh, having molten gold poured down his throat. He probably wanted it to happen that way. He's probably like, pour the gold down my throat, then I can eat the hottest peppers. <laughs> Tycho Brahe died of a bladder infection after refusing to leave for the bathroom during a banquet for the sake of good manners. Oh, no, no, no. It says that they figured out later that, no, he just died of mercury poisoning. Never mind. But he made, he's still alive. He makes comics, and they're funny. Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah, it's a funny list, and I could just sit here and read them all day. So I'm gonna Let's stop. not do that. So my funny thing of awesome of the day was uh, Case Western. There's a video floating around the net of uh, a chemistry lecture. All right. I think it was a Halloween chemistry lecture, but I don't think that matters. And basically this teacher up front showing something about chemical equilibrium, some reaction, whatever. Uh -huh. And all of a sudden, um, 
I don't know which ghost it is. Pinky, Blinky, Winky, pa- Pac Man. The blue Pac Man ghost is about to be eaten. The blue one. They're oh, they're all blue when they're about to be eaten. So yeah, when yeah. A, an, an about to be eaten one of unknown name comes in and tells the teacher he's coming. He's coming to get me. Oh my god! <laughs> you know he ate the big pill. What am I gonna do? Right? And the teacher's just like, haha, leave. You're you're funny with your Pac Man ghost. All right, get out of here. Yeah. And then Pac Man comes. <laughs> <laughs> and I was like, oh my god, it's Pac Man. And then Pac Man chases him around a bit and then chases him out of the room. And everyone there was was very entertained. Man, I miss college and I miss uh, hijinks like that. I miss that type of college hijinks. Nothing like that happens at work. There's no way I'd be sitting at work and someone dressed like Pac Man would run through the conference. It's a pretty good Pac Man costume, too. Nice ah. and solid, good shape. Better than some of the ones I saw at Otakon. Well, even some of those were good, though. I saw one really good one at Otakon because it was going up the escalator. And it looked like it was eating people. Oh, that was a good one. Yeah. <laughs> I this get this picture. is a lot like that one, but it's not the round ones I don't like. Eh. The round ones are too. Uh... Anyway. Yep. Do, so do, it's do, do. anime day. Anime, and manga, manga and comics. Yeah. Arts, all that stuff. Web comics. All those sorts of things. Yep. Though we did watch uh, episode one and two of a newish anime. It's very new. Yeah, it's very good, too. Mushishi? Mushishi. It's about these little uh, things called mushi. Well, they're not all little. They're Well, some are big. At first, I thought they were all little. They look like little like protists or little bacteria. But, you around. know, the big ones where it seemed to be a bunch of little ones combined, but yeah. other times not. It's sort of an ambiguous spiritual thing. It's neat because the show starts and there's what looks like a main character and this like peripheral character character who comes in. And then through the episode, you realize at the end that the peripheral guy who came in is the main character and the guy who thought was the main character is just this one episode throwaway side plot. Yep. But I like it seems like every episode is a, is a one episode plot, which is yep. good because the order doesn't matter so much. But I'm sure that over time that more about the Mushishi guy w- with one eye is revealed. With as was in episode two. And his Mushishi pin. And his, it was Mushi pin. Mushi pin. Because the, the creatures are Mushis. Yes, and he is a Mushishi because he chases Mushi. But it's not like Pokemon, which is, you know, it's, it's cool because it's like creatures, but not Pokemon. Though he has at least one of these Mushi that is his own personal. I'm sure uh, he has more and he yeah. uses their powers, but whatever. It's a good show and it's worth watching. Yeah, it's not, a, it's not an AA++ show, but... It's the best show this season so far. Yeah, if you like, uh, like Shadow Star, Narutaru. It's similar to that, but that had a little more fighting Pokemon leanings. Yeah, but it's I'd like it's like po- Pokemon plus Mushishi equals. It is Shadow in the genre Star. of strange and cool, unexplained creatures in an episodic kind of deal. It's more in the genre of, you know, nice, happy little. Spiritual story kind of things. Yeah, it wasn't all happy, though. Luckily, there were some happy endings in the early parts. Well, okay, they're they're not perfectly happy endings, which yep. is good though, because perfectly happy endings make for bad. Yep. Dreck. Like in the first episode, you see all these mushi, and you're like, "Oh, the mushi are cool and cute and whatever. And they're happy." Then the second one, there's the bad mushi. Yeah, it's like not all mushis are good or bad. They're just mushi. They're just yep. these creature things. I like the way they look. They're really funny looking. Some of them are cute and happy. I like the ones that are all like translucent protozoa thingies and they fly around. And I'm very glad that unlike Cluster Edge, nobody got the gay on them. There was no uh <laughs> No no uh, no <laughs> unexpected random gay. God. I still can't get over that scene in freaking Cluster Edge. Yeah, we just we don't want anyone listening to this to think that we're homophobes or anything. No, we're not. In fact, Considering that we have a tradition in our group known as the Yowie Couch. Yeah, but we can't take it when there's even an allusion to a Yowie in something we're actually watching. <laughs> Mainly because we have a friend who, uh, we were over hanging out at her house one day, and we discovered her Yowie dungeon. Oh, yeah. she. Ate, in fact, we were talking about making molds of penises randomly. Don't ask why we were talking about that. You yeah. really, uh, you don't want to know. <laughs> but... All of a sudden, she had a relevant Yaoi manga. Uh, I Sa- believe it was Sephiroth yeah. making a mold of his penis and then impregnating himself with it. And uh, this one manga came out of a sea of manga under her bed. And it was cool and creepy at the same time. All of which were Yaoi. Yeah, yeah. Yep. All right, Mushishi to Yaoi. <laughs> so, how do we get from Yaoi to something else? Well, let's talk about something that we really don't mind Yaoi mixing with. Didn't you watch... Uh, uh, Gankutsuo. It's not so yaoi. No, it's not. Shamanic Princess. Yeah, you can talk about Shamanic Princess. We can get yaoi on that all we want. Yeah, there's no yaoi in it, though. 
No? It's old. It's real old. But it still looks kind of like... Eh. It was animated really well for when it was made, and it's really pretty. Wasn't it made in the 90s? Yeah, no. early 90s. Early 90s? Like early mid-90s. This is old uh, Are stuff. you sure to check the year on it? It looks like a 96 or a 97 to me. Yeah, early mid-90s. It's pretty we'll old. We'll have to go check the year. I saw it a long, long time ago. All right. And I watched it again, because I hadn't seen it in a while, and when I'd first seen it... It was a show that I had seen, one of my early mo- anime that I'd seen, so it was kind of, uh, I saw it through the eyes of someone who thinks all anime is perfect and awesome, and I loved it all. And I watched it again, and I still really like the show, but it's definitely not a anime. Yeah, I remember when I was uh, getting into anime, and like, anything was great. Now, yeah. not so much. Though I gotta say, if you like pretty shows, Shamanic Princess is definitely worth watching. It is definitely a... Pretty people standing on top of tall, spiry buildings saying poetic things and then fighting with each other with magical things. So so it's X? Yeah, it's a lot like X. It's that style of show. It's 1996, I'm the win. Ah, uh, mid-90s. Whatever. <laughs> if I would have said 99, you'd have been like, mid-90s. It's between 90 and 2000. Nah. It's in the mid. <laughs> yeah. yeah, 96, I was a freshman in high school. That links up, actually, from when I saw it. All right, well, I guess that's good. Then. You saw one as brand new, then. I saw it when it was fairly new. Hey. I saw a uh, crappy fan sub of it, in fact. Mm. And I got to say, the dub is the worst dub ever. Worse than the Utena dub? Worse than the Utena dub. That can't be. I should play some clips from it. I think oh it's just you God. haven't seen terrible dubs in a uh, while. Uh, oh, my God. <laughs> just just for one example, there's this cute little fairy thing na- named Japalo, and he has a funny, like, normal voice. And in the American dub... Instead of having, like, a funny little guy kind of voice, it has, like, the voice of an old carny. And everyone speaks in such a stilted way. An old carny? Like an, like a carny from a carnival, only who, she was old and she was a gypsy. She? Or he, I couldn't tell. So we did get the yaoi all over this. Ah, uh, yeah, because the ferret was getting it on with, uh, yeah. Oh, my God. That's if funny. anything, it was probably more of a Yuri show, because all the main characters are girls, and they all seem to like each other a lot in a very non-Yuri way. Mm. This was before Yaoi and Yuri became mainstream, like they are now. Yeah, I don't think I'll be watching this show. Let's it's send it back show. to Netflix. Yeah. So, uh, I went to the comic book store today. And I see you picked up Rakuto. I got Rakuto. I see you picked up a Death Note. You know this Death Note. The, when I went there to get Death Note Volume One, the day it came out, yeah, there wasn't any. Le- there was a little manga rack because there's a big wall full of comic books and a little rack of m- new manga. Then they have a wall of the old manga, but they have a rack of new manga. Uh huh. There were no Death Notes on the rack of new manga when I went to get Volume One when it came out, and I asked, and they said, "Oh, I guess they're sold out." Today I went and I go to the rack, and Death Note Volume Two. Not on the rack. <laughs> and I'm like, damn it, I don't want it to come here like next week again because I had to go the next week to get volume one. It was so, ah. Uh, oh, no, I went to the other b- branch of the store you to get volume one. You buy every Death Note a week off from when it comes out. Yeah, but it's still a pain. It's not like you haven't already read it all. Haven't read it all. The plane took off, and I don't know what happens next. You know who, you know what happens in the only part of the plot that I really care about. It doesn't matter. But anyway, um... So I asked the guy, I was like, all right, this guy was running around the store like a nut. I think they were short on employees because one guy <laughs> I always see there wasn't there, you know, and stuff. Yeah. And I'm like, got death note? So he looks on the rack. It's not on the rack. The rack actually was really empty. So he goes and he's like, where's the overstock? I got the last one in the overstock. Awesome. Then he took the overstock and he started filling up the manga shelf again. And I was like, yes. <laughs> and death note is awesome. Yeah. And I read it again. It's still awesome. If you haven't read death note, read it. Oh, my God. There are two volumes out now. Buy them all. Oh, my God. Because I must say, Ryuku is probably the best character in any manga ever, with the possible exception of Major Kusanagi herself. Uh, he's cool. I think he's the coolest. He, he's the only person I've ever seen in any manga who got both upside downy and inside outy at the same time. For not eating apples? Something like oh, that. Oh, oh, oh my god. The, when you read it again, there's great stuff in here. Like, when he makes the prisoners who commit suicide write notes before they die. Yeah. And he reads down the left-hand columns. L looks at the notes and he reads down the left-hand columns, like the first letters and the first words of each sentence. Yeah. And it says, like, L, do you know? It said that in Japanese, too. Yeah, and the next one says... Uh, gods of death, 
And the last one says, eat apples. Or like (laughs) apples. I don't remember that. Yeah, I I don't remember that kind of stuff either, because it reminded me of when you were talking. You were like, remember when L was all freaking out about the gods of death? That's why he was freaking out about the gods of death, because he talked about it in the stupid notes. Maybe. That was it. No. Before then, L didn't even know about gods of death. Look at L's eyes. There's no way that there's not some connection between L and Shinigami. But look, he's like, are you saying that, uh, what do they call him? Shinigami. Shinigami exist? Question mark. That's when he started getting on it. And then after it, whenever he hears gods of death again, he's like, uh huh? Because it was written in those notes that El- uh, Kira uh, made him write down. See, we'll see. Because look at his eyes. There's something there. I'll bet money. Now, look, before he was talking about gods of death and he was all freaking out about it, and it, he yeah, didn't yeah, freak I, out. I what you said. Yeah. I just disagree. You didn't have the manga. I read it more recently you know than what? you. You know what? Look in at English. his eyes. Look at his eyes. His eyes aren't like that until after he's read those notes from Kira. No, his eyes are always that way. His eyes aren't like that until... Oh, God. You're such a nut. <laughs> you always try to look into it so much to the point you know where what? you assume you know what? you're looking in is right, and it's never right, ever. Because it, it worked with Gundam Seed. I was right about almost everything except the one unpredictable Gundam Seed point. isn't like this. This yeah. is completely different. It does not logically follow that because you can predict one anime, you can predict every anime and manga yeah. there is. Plus, I'm still waiting for one character in Death Note who left, and I figured they would come back, and they didn't, and I'm curious about that. Yeah. I don't, like, we can't really talk anymore because I, a lot of people haven't read this, and I don't want to spoil it because it's one of the best manga I've read in a long time. It's, you know, I'm sure there's tons and tons of manga that are really awesome we haven't read, but... I've read lots and lots of awesome mangas, at least all the English ones. Yep. And this one's really awesome. Very good. And it sells out, so it, it's not just me that thinks ha, it. They have raws of it at Walden Books, yeah. so. Yeah, and they sell, I guess, kind of. Yeah, they sell well enough to keep having them. But something no one knows about. Yeah. Rocketo. Rocketo! Rocketo is so da, awesome. Da, 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 da. And no one knows about it. Well, a few people know about it. It, it might be the most popular indie comic right now. Yeah, read Rocketo. It's printed sideways, so you'll see it, and you'll know what It I'm looks like a about. comic book, but it opens at the bottom instead of the side. Well, it's stapled at the top, so you flip it up, but you rotate the whole thing 90 degrees to read it. So it's wide. It's, it's like, like a, a land, it's landscape. Nine. Yeah. Landscape comic book. And it's and just it's... awesome. It's got this cool style of drawing. Well, it's like painting, kind of. And the characters are very... Awesome. There's not much I can say. You just got to read it. It's about this guy in like this other universe or world or whatever, and he's a navigator or mapper, a mapper. Yeah. And he has like a compass in his hand, and the mappers are the only people who can know where they're going. And there's only different races, like cat people and dog people and lizard people. And I still like that tiger guy from the first or second The tiger one. guy was definitely awesome, but in this one, there's a new kind of guy in issue three. is very awesome. Is that the guy you showed me a glimpse of? It's the guy I showed you a glimpse of. The guy I think is a bad guy? He's not a bad guy. He's gotta be a bad guy. Nope. No one good looks that evil. Uh, oh, he's kinda good. He's, he's pretty good. Uh-huh. He's definitely not a villain. Anyway. The whole thing is, is made by Frank Espinosa. At least he does all the art. And I think he writes it, but there's a co-writer... Mary Taylor. And there's a logo designer. And let's see, there's presented, whatever, president, you didn't do anything, creative director, Chris Stone, I guess he did something. But those, it's really weird for an American comic to have so few people working on it. Huh. Usually a manga, like even Death Note, which is crazy, is made by two people. The story and the art guy. That's, that's, and that's unusual. A lot of times it's just one guy, story and art. You know? Like Akira, it's so huge, one guy. Yep. American comics, it's usually like writer, penciler, inker. Tracer. Tracer, yeah. (laughs) Actually, they're not really tracers, but it's like they separate all these things out because they have to produce it so fast. And it's so with the crazy colors and the high productions. They need a lot of people to do it the American way. But, you know, to do it in black and white, I guess you don't need so many people. Yeah, plus a lot of of manga cards just kind of work at their own pace, and they come out whenever they finish them. Yeah, or they, well, they come out with very few pages, like, weekly, when yep. in America they need to come out with, like, like 20 high-quality pages monthly, you know? 
And it's not easy because they have editors like telling them what to do. Yeah. The manga guys just do whatever they want, really. Plus, the comics used to have the things like the comics code kind of crippling them. Well, but that's gone now. Yeah, luckily. Except for Archie Comics and a few, <laughs> few DC Comics still do the comics code. No one else. No one cares anymore. Yeah, but Rocketo, it's it's like kind of a watercolor type of thing. It reminds me a lot of like fifties type sci fi. Only kind of like only Samurai Jack with less colors and less ah. hard edges. Kind of. It's very soft, and there aren't many hard edges at all. Yeah, it, but it's very awesome. It is. It is. If you're not going to read Death Note, at least read Rocketo. If, if you just go to the comic book store near you, or an online comic book store, or something. I mean, even if you don't want to buy, how many comic books is it going to be? Uh, it doesn't know. I don't know how many it's going to be. Just buy the first one and read it. You'll get enough out of that to make it worth it. Yeah, I actually like the first volume the best. Compared, right? You know, even though volume three was real good and two was real good, it's it's all real good. <laughs> there'll be, I'm sure, there'll be a trade paperback one day. I'll buy and then give that to people. Yeah, Rocket O rules. Yep. No one knows about it except for really awesome people. But now everyone should know about it and read it. And tomorrow. In our Netflix comes the final DVD of Ghost in the Shell Standalone Complex, which we had yet to see the end of. Uh, yeah, I think uh, the episodes that I hadn't seen yet were the ones that we just watched. And I love that show. It's a great show. It's a real good show. Compared to you know, and when you've been in such a drought of anime, it's good to have shows that were great that you didn't watch that you can fall back on. Yep. If nothing good comes out in the next few months... We're going to have to watch, like, Nadeshiko, which neither one of us have seen. Strangely. Yeah, it's really weird. We've seen, like, every anime. Except I ran a freaking one. anime club. You remember, like, the biggest anime club. We hung out. We spent whole weekends marathoning shows. Never saw Nadeshiko. Nope. We saw everything else. Yeah. But there's a lot of old shows that are great that we didn't see. What else do you have in our queue? We had the Z Gundam? Uh, Z Gundam. Yep. Uh... Last Exile isn't that old, but I always wanted to see Lost it. Exile, Last, Last Exile, Last Exile. Yeah. Who knows? I don't remember. But yeah, we should see that. Yeah, Aquino's Journey looks cool. Yeah, It looks like a little girly show. Yeah, of course, Gonku Tsubo is coming out. I'm going to buy all the DVDs because I love that show. Good. You only watch like a few episodes. I watched the first seven, and I loved them all. I think all. I watched like a little over half of the show and then stopped because I don't know what happened. If you've read the book, the unabridged Penguin Classics Count of Monte Cristo... Gonko Tsuo is a thousand times better to watch. Yeah, yeah, things like that, but whatever. It's still a fun show. It is. It's not the greatest, greatest show, but it was... The part that I got to is really cool, and then I stopped watching. I think because they stopped being available, or it left RIT, I don't know. Yeah, most of what makes the show great is that it's very pretty, and it's very stylized. Well, all the people that are important have those, like, magic clothes that they put on there. Yep. That's, that's what happens when Gonzo spends a lot of money on a show. Well, shows like that are right up my alley. I mean, my favorite freaking show is still Utena, which is the same kind of deal of stylized, pretty people. And but Utena is, was so cheap to make, and Gan Kutso was so expensive. It's completely different. Yeah, imagine if Utena were made as high production value as Gan Kutsuo was. It would be the same thing. It would yeah. just be better color in terms of like <laughs> looking like 2000 and not like 91 when it was made. Maybe the fights wouldn't just be like Utena and Toga standing there with like a silhouette of their swords going tsh, tsh. All right, all right, all right. Maybe that would change. Yeah. There'd probably be more choo-choo. That would be good. <laughs> Who could potentially be the only one Akio did not have sex with. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But we don't know that for sure. <laughs> but that's the only one there's a chance. <laughs> He's the only chance. All right. Uh, are we done? I got nothing. Oh, oh, we're, we're, we're going to keep our bit of telling a story? Oh, we should tell a story. What story should we tell today? Ron Jeremy. Ron Jeremy? All right, this is your story, so take it away, Scott. So, so my mom... When you, you turned your microphone off in the middle of the podcast. I bumped it by accident. I turned it back on. Ooh. You made the stupid click. Ooh. It's bad. So tell the story about Ron Jeremy and how you're his illegitimate son. I'm not his illegitimate son. You're, are you sure? I'm 100% sure. Okay. Do we need, if we get, uh, we'll do a DNA test if you really want to. I mean, sorry, am I fat? Do I look like Mario to you? <laughs> I mean, a penis might, might throw you off, but... <laughs> <laughs> But I, I can assure you, <laughs> it's not the case. Anyway, so one day I'm sitting with my mom. We're watching, um, what was that movie? Boondock Saints? I think he was the bad guy. Yeah, yeah, it was Boondock Saints. He's in it. for like a, He's a bad guy who gets killed. 
And uh, my mom's like, you see that guy? I'm like, what guy? And I'm like, and I'm like the the cop, the, the detective guy. Uh, William Defoe. I thought it's Willem. Without eh, Defoe. But, yeah, he's a really good actor, by the way. Even though he's got the gay. But whatever. <laughs> 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 Come over here. I'll give you the gay. Oh no. It's, <laughs> Too much gay in today's podcast. It's <laughs> Cluster Edge's fault, I'm telling you. Or it's, um... You know what it is? We haven't had a yaoi couch in, uh... A long time. So anyway, my mom's like, no, the other guy. And I'm like, Ron Jeremy? <laughs> and she's like, yeah! And I, she's like laughing, and I'm like, what about him? <laughs> and she's like, she's like, I went out with him. And I'm like, what the hell? Was he, uh, still fat back then? I don't. I didn't get those details, but apparently, he went to Queens College. She went to Queens College, right? I think Seinfeld also went to Queens College. I don't know if at the same time, but anyway, my mom was on vacation in Florida. He was on vacation in Florida. They were on the same beach, so she went out with him like twice, and then broke up with him because he was a sleazy guy, <laughs> and and he's still a sleazy guy, <laughs> and that that was that. But apparently, my mom didn't even realize any of this. Until, like, her friend Judy knew that he became Ron Jeremy. Apparently his name was William Hyatt, but that's what he... Oh, no, his, he says his name is Ron Hyatt and not Ron Jeremy. Uh-huh. But uh, he says that's what his real name is, but my mom said that his name was, like, uh, Ron something Jewish. Like, gold something ski, who knows. But I don't know. I can't... I don't know. Uh-huh. But anyway, it was him. And outstanding. The funny part was that my mom told me the story, and then I told everyone I knew I got a story. <laughs> and I didn't tell them what the story was. And then I came, and they were all in the same place at the same time. And I told the story to everyone at once. And, and it, 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 it created a, a lot of suspense. You did. I remember that. I remember being pissed because you kept saying, I got a story, but it's got to wait. It's got to wait. It's got to wait. And it worked. It did. Very, uh, I'm, you're lucky. You're <laughs> damn lucky that that story lived up to the expectation. What kind of story do you think I was going to tell? We expected you to be like, nothing. <laughs> nothing happened. I'm just screwing with you guys. Or you would have told one of your stories like, so the I, other I can day, see you all now sitting around there waiting for me to show up thinking of what the story could be and not even coming close. <laughs> not even close. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> never would have suspected Ron Jeremy. No, nope, that, that's why it was great. Eh? If I would have thought you would have figured it out, I wouldn't have given you any time to figure it out because that would have <laughs> ruined it. Because imagine if I came and I told it, right? And whether it was a good story or not, it was something you would have thought of. Huh? You would have been like, oh, we thought of that. You suck. Yeah. I'd be like, but it was still good just because you thought of that. Now I'm the suck. It could only be something you couldn't have thought of and also not the suck. So uh, we'll wait for the results of that DNA test. Right. Yeah. And that was Geek Night with Rim and Scott. Special thanks to DJ Pretzel for the music, and promotional consideration was provided by no one.